Hi, my name is Lorraine Watry and welcome to my studio. I am a watercolor artist and I've worked with watercolor for 26 years now and I thought I would start a new series of videos where I go over different tips, tricks and techniques for working with watercolor and hopefully these short videos will help you in your journey and if you have a question or a technique that you would like to see please comment below and I will try to accommodate that in a future video. that I did number 74 uh, painting a background a, a wet and wet background on hummingbirds and I have removed the masking tape and the mask on the bird and the flowers and I am now starting to paint layers on the bird and uh, I did not remove the mask until uh, I had the background where I wanted it value wise and just kind of the look of it and I am starting the bird with a light brown mix. Um, I'm trying to remember that might be Quinn Sienna, maybe with a touch of cobalt in it here and there. And so the cobalt will make it a little more neutral, but every now and then I'm using it just straight Quinn Sienna. And then sometimes I will use a little bit of cobalt with it. And this is a Rufus hummingbird. And so it does have some rustier, um, areas on the feathers that the Quinciana works well for. And then I am using uh, a mix on the neck area that is more gray. So probably, I think it's the cobalt with a little bit of the Quinciana, but it's, it is more of a, on the blue side of that mix. So it, it looks gray. And I am just kind of picking out areas that I can figure out what to paint, um, figure out, help me figure out where I am on the bird. And I am working in layers. So I am painting the lightest layer and on the neck area because the neck and the belly um, are facing away from the light, that will have shadow even though that is a light area on my image. And uh, I'm using uh, cobalt and uh, green uh, gold mixed together and that gave me those vibrant feathers for uh, the back of the hummingbird and I am leaving spaces so some of the uh, color that I put down for the first layer is peeking through some of those feathers that I am painting on there now and all of these things are small and detail-y sort of but they are they are still first layers for me I am not trying to get into the detail too much yet. It's a little harder when you're doing a small painting like this to not get too detailed um, right away, but I am working on just kind of getting the layers on and pretty soon I'm going to go and put the eye in there because that really helps me tell whether or not the, the bird or the animal or the human is working when you uh, get the eye and the face working. So I'm probably using my uh, f number four and number six brushes right now. And those are silver black velvet. And those are listed below in most of my videos. And here and there, I may be softening an edge. So some of it is just going on and then it dries with a hard edge. And some of it, I may come back with a little water and soften an edge here and there because feathers have both hard and soft edges. The uh, softer areas will feel like uh, they are the, the softer feathers and then harder edges uh, will make it feel more like a flight feather. And the eye, I am using Thalo Blue and a mix of permanent alizarin crimson and it makes a near black and I left uh, the highlight so I painted around the brightest white area on that eye and then I think later on this one, I know I do on some of them, I will go back and lift just a little bit of color in that black area to make it feel like there may be a reflection or something, uh, maybe something from the sky that is reflecting on the bird. And that helps give life to the uh, eye of the bird or the animal. And uh, so just still picking out places. And sometimes I will choose to paint an area because I kind of know what I want to do in that area. So um, sometimes there's not really a 
first, second, third that I'm doing, but it just kind of skipping around and picking out the area that I want to paint next. I am using uh, Quinn Burnt Scarlet and some Ultramarine Blue for the wing that is on the right side of the bird and left side to us, right to the bird. And uh, that wing is blurred. So it is um, not really a full wing. Uh, the look of it. it is just kind of this blurry shape. And I do believe I used some water on that area to start. And then some of the paint that I put on there has a soft edge because of the water and some of it has harder edges. And I did go back and adjust some of that later as well. So it kind of got it started, but it wasn't uh, finished. And with hummingbirds, because of how fast their wings move, I use my digital SLR camera to take pictures of them. And uh, if I really wanted to stop the action completely, then I would have to use even a faster shutter speed than I do use, which is the, I think I use 1250 is my shutter speed, um, which will stop the action, but uh, not necessarily uh, stop the wings completely from being a little blurry here and there. And I actually like that look because it makes it feel like the bird is moving. Um, so I did go and use a little uh, ultramarine and it might be the Quinn Burnt Scarlet or it might, yeah, I think it was the Quinn Burnt Scarlet and ultramarine to make uh, a kind of muted purple mix to uh, paint on the uh, belly. And I painted it over the uh, kind of rusty paint that I had there before. Some of that does peek through and then later, right now, you can see that I do go back with more rust color um, paint on top of that. And that was after that area was dry. And so I build the layers. So sometimes I come in with some shadow color and then I might decide, well, that's a little too um, sh or purple now. So now I want to put some more of the uh, brown back on top of it. So I'm going back and forth and uh, layering. And with watercolor, that gives you that nice transparent feel where you can feel some of that earlier layer uh, through the subsequent layers. Right in there, I'm using my flat brush with a little water on it because there were some feathers down on the belly area that were uh, kind of ruffled. And when I pulled the mask off, my masking tape uh, left a little bit of a rough edge that wasn't quite the look I wanted. So I used the flat brush and then I'm using my regular paintbrush to go in and just kind of clean up that edge with some of the background color. So as I am painting along, I am looking at the values and the values are the important thing in order to make this bird uh, feel realistic, but also um, feel like it has form. And because I have the sunlight on the back side of the bird, then I need to keep going and checking the values on the shadow area to make sure that the shadow area is dark enough. And because this is a smaller painting, it is four by six. Um, I do get into the details kind of uh, with a little more speed than I might normally. Uh, this is Ultramarine and the Quinn Burnt Scarlet, and it's a muted kind of purpley brown uh, mix that works well for the hummingbird's wings. And it was just the first coat. And then I used that same mix in a darker version to make an almost black in order to make the dark feathers uh, on the back area near the tail. And then I'm adding another layer to the belly and the neck. And uh, so you can see that as I work through the process of painting it, I am slowly increasing the value to get it where I want. And so when you paint on uh, something around an area that you've already painted, you may realize, okay, I need to make that darker. Or you may realize you need to lighten it. So you might use a little water and lift um, to pull something back. And I tend to like to paint uh, in layers and paint a little slower than um, some might because I want to uh, make sure that my values are working. And uh, it's just a way that I can create something that looks realistic. 
And then I'm using that flat brush here and there to lift and soften edges a little bit. So more paint. Um, the belly may have had anywhere from six to eight layers on it. So I, I did go back to it quite a bit. And some of those layers are just little strokes to make it feel like there are feathers in that area. Sometimes it's not painting color over the whole thing. Sometimes it may just be little marks here and there. So then on that wing back there, it needs those darker values. And those darker values are going to help it feel like there is light uh, coming through the wing. And so I am looking at my photograph that I took of this hummingbird and uh, I'm seeing if the, uh, there are darker shadows or there's any separation between the wing and the neck of the bird. And I want to make sure that my values are uh, strong enough in order to make that happen. Sometimes, depending on my image and how well it came out from my camera, I may go in and make those adjustments whether I see them on my image or not. So it really can depend um, on how your painting is coming out. And uh, at some point you need to put down the image you're working from and if you're working from a photograph and uh, just kind of look at your painting and see what your painting needs. I did go back and lift just a little bit of a light area at the bottom of the bird's neck before it goes into the belly so that uh, those there were some lighter feathers there. I'm using the ultramarine or a phthalo blue and the permanent alizarin crimson for the bottom edge of the beak and then also for the feet. And a hummingbird's feet are so small that they don't actually use them to walk. They will perch on branches but they don't actually walk on their feet. And then just a little bit of shadow on that beak where uh, the flower, the tip of the flower is uh, over the beak and that helps make it feel like the beak is going into a form and not just kind of uh, hidden or not painted completely. And a little more value uh, on that area and that will help separate the neck better from that wing. And I continued to go back to the neck area and work on that off and on because it was uh, one of those areas that I just wasn't quite sure I was getting it dark enough and, and if it was working. Now I'm using my flat brush with a little water on it and uh, I don't think you see me use my towel but every now and then I might dab with my towel to dry but basically I'm going in and softening those edges so just a little stroke back and forth with the water on that brush and I can soften the wing edge and that will make it feel like there's a little bit of motion in that wing as well. And it also makes the head of the bird stand out more because it is then in focus and the wing is slightly blurry. Now I'm going to get out colors for the flowers and those flowers are red birds in a tree. And I don't know their scientific name, that's just how I know them, but hummingbirds are really attracted to them. So if you're trying to attract hummingbirds to your yard, that might be one to look up. And I'm using Quin Rose and some Cobalt. The Cobalt is only mixed in every now and then with the Rose when I feel like it's a little more purple. Uh, the flowers are kind of a pinkish red and sometimes with the light on them, they'll look a little warmer. So I did also get out uh, Quin Coral and uh, I think I got out Oriolan Yellow. So I am either Oriolan or my new Gamboge. And so I am doing a little bit of some blending here and there. On that bloom right there, it's got some pink on one part of it and then it's a little yellower as it goes to the left. And I left the highlight on that one. So where I saw really highlighted areas, I left them white and some of those later might have gotten uh, their edges softened just a little bit. So it looks like it's really glowing or I may have just left it the way I painted it. And then I am going around and picking a flower here and there and just painting individual ones. And sometimes I will just paint a base coat and leave it. 
Um, for this one, I painted the lighter value on the top edge and then I got more paint on my brush and, and darkened it as it came down. And these flowers are uh, kind of rounded and bulbous. Um, so they have softer edges in places uh, from the dark value to the lighter values. And I am changing color here and there. So there were a few places that felt a little peachy and I would use a little bit of the yellow in the mix. And um, I also used the Quin Coral here and there. And it looks like right now that I'm painting right next to something that was wet, but I was letting areas dry and or I was using a blow dryer and because of the time lapse, you just might not be seeing some of that. And sometimes it helps to uh, paint uh, like from the top down. So sometimes you might paint a flower here, flower there, and then start working on the uh, stems and the leaves. Uh, but for me, for this one, it was nice just to keep painting with the same colors. And so it, I could pick out where my flower shapes were and uh, it wasn't a problem to go through the through the plant that way. And I am on these, uh, I do go back and on some of them I add a second layer. Some of them were only uh, done in one layer and some may have gotten a third layer depending on if it needed a shadow or something like that that was harder edged. So when I want the shadow to be a softer edge or I want there to be a change of value that is softer, then I try to paint it all at once. And if I want it to have a harder edge, I will paint the base coat, let it dry, and then come back with the shadow. And again, you're, you're not seeing some of that uh, drying time. So some of those places that I am going back into here and there have dried and I'm adding shadows or darker areas. Uh, the image that I'm painting right now probably, probably, I can't talk, probably took about two hours to paint the bird and the flowers. Uh, I don't remember how long the uh, background was. It was maybe, oh, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And so doing a small painting like this, uh, especially if you pick a subject that you have done before or that you concentrate on doing that same subject over and over, you can get pretty quick with uh, doing uh, the painting. And uh, this one is detailed, but it's not incredibly detailed because my background is all painted wet on wet. So the, the bird and the flowers is the most detailed area. I've had quite a few hummingbirds in my yard this summer. And so whenever I get a chance, I take a few moments with my camera and I'll go out there and see if I can get some images. So I'll be doing more of these. So unfortunately, the leaves and the stems of the plant, I uh, did not get videoed. I don't know what happened, but I don't have that. So in a few minutes, you'll see a jump. But um, I continued uh, with adding layers. And I think I used cobalt and maybe oriole and yellow for a lot of the stems and leaves. I may have added some new gamboge here and there. And um, pretty quick here, you'll see it jump and everything will be mostly painted. There it is. And so I hope this was interesting and uh, you can kind of see the process of working through painting a realistic hummingbird and flowers and hope you'll give it a try. And uh, if you have a tip, trick or technique video you would like to see, please leave a comment below. And I hope you have a good day. Happy painting. Bye. <music>